name is Sebastian Puna. I'm currently a Miller Fellow in uh, the Department of Statistics and Integrative Biology at the UC Berkeley. Uh, you might have heard that we were developing RefBase for a couple of years now. And today I want to talk to you about what the status is, give you a quick overview of what RefBase can do for you and what RefBase actually is. So while we were working on RefBase, we came up with three major goals that we had, so what the aim is for RefBase. The first is, we had the idea that we have so many great models that we want to use to ask phylogenetic questions, but we couldn't really do that with the common software so, because they were just not expandable. So one of the goals that we had was that RefBase must be very flexible, general, and expandable. The second goal was that it should be very easy to use and easy to learn. So our goal is there that when you actually use RefBase, you should think like, oh, I actually understand what I'm doing here. I understand the analysis that I'm running, and I'm understanding the model that I'm using. So that is the second goal. And the third and final goal is that RefBase should also fast enough for people to use. Because honestly, no one would use the software if it takes two weeks compared to another software that only takes two days. So it should be at least comparable in the speed to all the other competing softwares. I will give you a little bit of an overview of how we achieved that by walking through some of the examples. On the left hand side, you will see always a graphical model. The graphical model is how you should think about the model, what the model represents. And on the right hand side here, you see a little bit of ref code. So that is the analysis code that we use in ref phase. Um, you will see that that code will look very similar to some of you because it looks pretty much alike and that is intentional. So I hope that a lot of people will find that intuitive. So for example, here we start, we have those two square boxes with the zero and the 1000. Those square solid boxes, they represent constant variables in our analysis. Then we have that solid circle here, which I call the root. That is our root variable and the solid a circle there, stochastic variable, it's a variable that we're actually going to infer in the analysis. What you're going to do in ref base using the ref language then, is you're just saying the root variable using that utility symbol that represents, you create a stochastic variable drawn from the uniform distribution with a 0 and 1000 as the boundary. Then we have two more parameters, so again, a solid square, so that speciation rate of two and the speed that exchange rate of one. And then we have again another uh, solid circle, psi for our phylogeny. So psi is again with the tilde, because it's a stochastic variable, that's drawn from a birth death process with the parameters so lambda, the speciation rate being <coughs> fixed to two and the exchange rate being fixed to one. But the root age is, is the parameter that we specified over here before. Over here we do something very similar, so we have alpha 1 and alpha 2, two fixed variables representing the fixed priors of, the, um, of our exchangeability rates and our base frequencies. Then we have pi, the, the base frequencies are drawn from the Dirichlet distribution and the exchangeability <coughs> rates are also from, drawn from that uh, Dirichlet distribution. So that's pretty much explicitly showing. Then we have a third kind of variable, a uh, dash circle. And dash circles here represent um, deterministic nodes. Deterministic nodes are just parameter transformation. Because given the base frequencies and the exchangeability rate, I can compute deterministically what my U matrix is over here. So that's a variable that you're actually not really estimating per se in your model because you're estimating the base frequencies and the exchangeability rate. Right? It's just the help of variable in the model. Um, the last variable that we have is the, um, the branch rate or clock rate being 0.01. In this little example, I really fixed it to being 0.01. And then we have S, which stands for the sequence data. So that's a stochastic variable drawn from the file of CGMC. Um, and that variable is shaded because it has data of it. You can see the corresponding part here that we actually binding, it has data attached to it, we clamp the data. So we created the sequence variable and then we just say dot clamp attached to data. 
Let me now try to show you how extendable that is and going into a partition data analysis. So let us assume that we have not just a single locus but several loci. And then I have to shade out or in light and right here all the parts of the exact same model, what I showed to you before, um, that does unchanged. The only difference now is that I put here those uh, dash box around it, which is a flight, which means it's a repetition going over the n different data subsets that I have. And what you can see here is that the base frequencies that I actually have an independent set of base frequencies for each data partition. That means that I also have an independent set of Q matrices for each data partition. But because you see that the exchangeability rates are explicitly outside that play, I'm assuming that all exchangeability rates um, are shared over all my data partitions. Um, I'm attaching that all the data partitions to its own sequence. Uh, I could uh, fly around with uh, that model in very many different ways. So I have a lot of freedom to specify partition data models. For example, one extension to that, or seeing it as, it as an extension, is a gene tree species tree analysis. Because gene tree species tree analysis are pretty similar to a partition data analysis, with the only difference here is that they actually have a different gene tree by each of my data partitions. So for example, if every partition or every subset of the data has a single P. So here I actually drew the different version for it that I said that the exchangeability rates are uh, independent for each gene. And how we specify that gene tree species tree model is we assume here again that this part, my work that process prior on the species tree is the same. So that is uh, again represented over here, that I have again the, the root being drawn from the uniform distribution, the psi, the tree variable being drawn from the birth death process. So it's pretty much the same as all the other variables. But now for every single gene tree, here I'm saying that the gene tree GI is a, on a solid circuit. So I estimate the gene trees as the capacity variable. The gene tree depends on the species tree and on the population size. Now that's a pretty simple example. I, I use this that the population size is 100 for all the gene trees and all the branches in the gene tree. But you can easily change that to more complex models. So then I'm going in this for loop, I'm going over all the different genes that I have and saying that every single gene tree that's drawn from that multi-species collapse process and I use then the different gene trees over here on my Pablo CTMC model that is the, the phylogenetic model describing the evolution of the data. Um, so you, if you'll look back to the model before, it's pretty much really similar how we do a partition data model, uh, gene tree model. And a lot of the flexibility that applies to one of the models that we're developing applies also to all the other models that we're developing. And that way, ref based with the graphical model leverage lots of flexibility. Um, the last model that I want to show you as an example here is a relaxed clock model and how you can set up uh, a lot of different relaxed clock models. So let us assume again that we just have a single gene. So all the parts here, the prior distribution on the species tree are the same, and we have just a single GTR model over here. But now instead of assuming that I have a 0.01 clock rate for my entire tree, I'm actually saying that I have 2n minus 1 different branch rates. So 2n minus 1 because every single branch has its own branch rate. And I say that they are drawn from a constant mean parameter and a constant standard deviation. So here I'm setting the mean parameter with the left arrow, so a constant assignment, setting it to zero, and then the sigma, the sort of standard deviation parameter to one. And then I create for every single branch rate, I draw the rate parameter from a log normal distribution. Doing it in that way, I actually have just created the uncorrelated log normal, relaxed block model, so the UCLN model. If I want to exchange that log normal distribution by a gamma distribution, I have the independent gamma ray for IGR model. If I would exchange just this variable by an exponential distribution and just have a single rate parameter, then I have the uncorrelated exponential distribution. 
So I have a lot of freedom in the way how I want to specify prior distributions are different models to model the variability in the phylogenetic process over here. I could also specify hyper prior um, on the mean rate of standard deviation if I wanted to estimate those parameters as well. Um, to summarize that part a little bit, I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping that I could convince you that graph based as, uh, with the graphical models is pretty flexible and that the ref scripts are very explicit in showing exactly what you're going to do in the model analysis. The last part I want to talk about if ref base is actually efficient enough, I have that entire flexibility of ref base comes at a greater cost so that it's slower. So there's three different ways how you could assess the performance of a phylogenetic <coughs> analysis. The first way is looking at how fast does ref base compute likelihood. And I just ran an MCMC analysis that had to recompute the likelihood over and over again, and I compared it to Beast and Mr. Bay with and without the vehicle implementation. And the thing what you can see here with ref base is that ref base is only slower than Beast using Beagle, but it's actually faster than Mr. Bay's or the plain implementation of uh, Beast. Um, Similarly, the second performance study that you can do is you can look at a Bayesian statistic software by seeing how good is it in um, using shortcuts in the MCMC. Because if you only change a small part in the tree, you don't need to recompute the entire tree like you. You just need to recompute small parts of it. And RefBase actually does a lot of pretty good um, job in recomputing all these small parts and even outperforms in that really little example. Um, bees using Beagle. Um, I'm, I don't want to say that ref base is really much faster than bees or anything, so the take home message here should be that ref base performs on par, it's in the same ballpark as other softwares, and you don't need to be concerned that it's slower and you're losing anything um, just because of the flexibility. So to summarize that, um, yeah, we have used graphical models to gain a lot of flexibility in ref base to have uh, to make it really extendable and expandable because it's a very modular software. Then it should be easy to learn because we try to adapt an outline uh, software approach. There's a lot of uh, documentation about it uh, available and it's fast and efficient implemented in C++. I want to thank all my collaborators, Sebastian Rousseau, Tracy Heath, John Rosenberg, Pat Ronquist, Brian Moore, Michael Landers, and Nicolas Lavio. And if you if you want to play around with RefBase, try some tutorials, just go to our website, refbase.com. There's um, quite a lot now available. Thank you. Um, yeah, so John Pilsenbeck is actually working a lot on the graphical um, interface and he has some version of that uh, working. I hope that it should be available soon. The unfortunate part currently is that it's mostly just available for Macs because it's implemented for Macs, but yeah. Um, you should ask John. He is around, he is at this conference, talk to him about that. Are there other questions? Yeah. Yes, so you can do a, um, use the multi-species coalescent approach, so similar to Starbies. It's the exact same model, you can do that in RefBase too. Yeah, so just go to, web, to the website, you find a lot of tutorials um, and information about it that will talk much more in detail about all the available models. Or just come to see me later.